Are you looking for a book to help you conquer your anxiety? Then this month's book therapy pick is for you. My name is Diana Garcia. I'm a licensed therapist in Florida and owner of a private practice called Nurturing Minds Counseling. If you're new around here, my monthly book therapy series is where I pick one mental health self-help book to recommend, review, and pick out three insights just in case you never get to pick up the book. Hit that subscribe button now to get more book recommendations, tips, and tricks to really help you improve your mental health. All right, let's jump into this month's pick. Okay, so this month's book therapy pick is DARE, the new way to end anxiety and stop panic attacks, as you can see from my screen here. Um, I have the ebook version, the Kindle actually, and if you actually have Kindle Unlimited like I do right now, this is actually free right now in their library. So if you do like this video, I'd encourage you to go check it out. The author, Barry McDonald, I hope I'm not butchering his name. Um, he's not actually a psychologist. He's someone that talks about his story that uh, I think around 18, 20, new adult age, he started to have, he had his first panic attack and that really kind of set him on this journey of figuring out how to deal with it. He talks about initially his resistance to his anxiety and panic really what made, it's what made it worse and how he's learned to move through that and through his own journey. And I think really being in this kind of self-help world and learning how to move through his anxiety, he's now kind of coached a lot of people in doing that. He also has an app, which he does reference throughout the book. Um, sometimes maybe a little bit too repetitive, but there are free resources in the app. Some of them eventually you do have to pay, like become a member. I'm gonna put the link for the app below just in case that's something you're interested in as well. Let's jump into the summary. Really the beginning, it's talking all about kind of just basic psychoeducation on anxiety, what it is, a fight or flight response. I really appreciate it though. He shared it in a way that was super easy to understand, no clinical jargon. Um, and a lot of examples that really resonated with me and resonated with like what I see in my clients. Then he goes through and talks about his dare response, which is one of the insights I'll go through, which is pretty much his kind of method or steps that he talks about that has been effective in dealing with his own anxiety and all these people that he's really coached. He does talk about that it has elements of evidence-based therapy, including cognitive behavioral therapy and acceptance and commitment therapy. I do practice a lot of acceptance and commitment therapy and I did see that sprinkled in. All right. So then we start to go through, um, he does then give kind of some examples or like, how would you apply the dare response to panic attacks, to fear of public speaking, fear of flying. So then he kind of goes through, he does acknowledge that some of this can feel really repetitive. And I did start to get that sense as I was reading, like, uh, then he's talking about like common things that he sees um, in people who struggle with anxiety and things they have to give up, right? So like giving up uh, fear of anxious thoughts, giving up on being so hard on yourself. And then he kind of goes through that theme and how it applies. Overall, I really found the book helpful with lots of tips and tools and explanations for things. Okay, insight number one is all about, I think the premise of this book is changing your whole relationship with anxiety. And I think that's really helpful because that's really, I think the basis of the dare response or approach but it's really starting to shift like the thing that keeps anxiety stuck, it's everything you tried to do to avoid or get rid of it, right? So if you have social anxiety and you're afraid of social situations, when you feel that anxiety right before you're gonna go out and let's say you decide in that moment, no, this is too hard, I can't handle this and you decide to stay home, you get instant relief, right? Oof, you don't have to deal with this really hard, scary thing. But that cycle, right? That energy of trying to avoid it and then like shrinking your life, is really what actually maintains anxiety. It's what keeps it being this big, scary thing. And it removes your opportunity from learning how to actually deal with the anxiety, right? Because if you are able to go to that party and learn to move through that anxiety, even if it's uncomfortable and still try to be present in whatever way feels meaningful to you, you have a new learning opportunity. You've just taught yourself that you can actually move and be with this anxiety and do something different. I think that's something, and even as I go through the four steps, you'll see that's part of it. But I just really wanted to highlight that as an insight because I think this is like a radically different view to view your anxiety or really any uncomfortable experience. But I think it's important to have that framework in mind. 
In state number two, I'm gonna go over the four kind of step process that he does for the dare response. D is for diffuse, A is for allow, R is to run towards, and E is to engage. So for D is diffuse, it's really noticing like your first response to any uncomfortable, anxious sensation, whether that's a physical sensation or even just thought, right? So he really talks about going back to shifting the relationship with anxiety. It's really the first point of contact with your anxiety can either make it better or worse. And typically, so if I think about, oh gosh, I'm feeling really hot or flushed, or, you know, I have to go to the bathroom, my stomach feels uncomfortable, uh oh, something's wrong, right? There's an interpretation that your mind makes danger. Something about this internal experience is not okay, and something bad's gonna happen. I don't know why this is happening, I don't know what's, ha what's triggering this response, so that means something is wrong. And so he really talks about kind of diffusing from those thoughts and noticing them, and then kind of talking back to them a little bit. Really kind of, he talks about like, your mind goes all through all these like, what if, what if, what if all these worst case scenarios and you talking back kind of like in this very flippant way, like, so what, right? So, so what if I have to use the bathroom or so what if I have an accident, right? Like it's not the end of the world, right? Like, so really starting to kind of diffuse from these thoughts and kind of respond to them and not necessarily have to like challenge your thoughts, but just kind of take a different stance or attitude towards all these anxious thoughts. He goes through in the book, like specific with every physical sensation or common physical sensations of anxiety, helps you understand biologically why that's happening so that you can even say like, oh, so what? So if my heart's beating really fast, that's fine. It just means my heart's like a healthy, good muscle that's doing its job, right? So also, he also kind of arms you a little bit with some facts to help you in this like, so what attitude towards these anxious thoughts. The second step, allow, it's really more about you allowing this experience to be, right? So whatever the discomfort is, and I think this is why I really focus on the first insight a little bit of shifting the way you're viewing your anxiety and your response to anxiety, because this really, I think it's a huge portion of like just sinking into this allowance piece of like, yes, this is uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean you're gonna die, right? Or yes, this is uncomfortable, but it doesn't mean you can't handle it. But you have to be willing to feel the discomfort, right? So my example of, let's say you go out to a social event and you have this desire to avoid it. Yes, it might be really, really hard to push yourself or move through it or be willing to do it. And right, you can do it, right? You can allow that discomfort to be with you, right? It's like you can bring like pack that discomfort in your purse or your book bag or bag. It's going to be with you at the party and it'll be there and it'll get activated at times and then it will quiet down. But you're just going to stop doing so much effort and focus to not have it be there and not allow this anxiety or this discomfort to rule and control your life. The third step, it's really about like running towards. I think he takes this kind of allow step to the next level. But he even kind of talks about like running towards this experience. And as he gives different examples, he even talks about like maybe even like challenging your anxiety, like in this like playful way of like, oh, so I'm going to have a panic attack. Bring it on. Right. Like, so what? Run towards it. Really tell your mind and your body, like, bring it on. I got this. Right. So really running towards that experience. He also talks about like running towards this sensation of anxiety and shifting almost like this is just energy. And right, like even if you think about like the difference between being nervous or being excited about something, right, it might feel like the same physical sensation internally. And then the last one is engage. So let's say you were focused on an activity right before you had an anxious response. He talks about re-engaging and truly trying to redirect your attention and effort to what you're doing in that moment. If you're not doing anything, he talks about picking something that you can focus and kind of really direct your full attention to and not in a way of avoidance or distraction he's really clear about that more in a way again of like you acknowledged you noticed you were with the discomfort of your anxiety and it might still even be there but you know what you're going to re-engage in this work presentation because that's what's important to you that like button now to let me know that you're going to try to embrace this dare response if you think this is something that would be really helpful to help you shift your anxiety then i highly highly encourage you to try it so give me that thumbs up now to let me know that you're committing to that. Insight is really from this chapter of giving up seeing this as a curse. And this is really kind of 
taking your anxiety relationship to the next level or the way you view your anxiety differently, right? So at this point, you've already been applying the DARE response, you've been practicing, you've been going outside of your comfort zone, right? You've been pretty much living your life without letting anxiety stop you. And not perfectly, it doesn't mean that there's not moments where you still get stuck or you still avoid or there's not moments when uh, your anxiety gets really high, right? Again, the whole purpose of insight number one is that you're just leaning into like anxiety is going to do its thing and you're just not so wrapped up by it. But really, this part is more about like shifting and taking it to the next level. We're not just like, okay, you are sh allowing and tolerating your anxiety, but now you're trying to shift the perception. And you're going to do that with kind of three different ways, forgiveness, meaning, and gratitude. And so quickly, it's more about like, if you are still holding up some like anger or resentment towards this anxiety, and listen, I get it. And this last insight, I really want to acknowledge, like if you're not there yet, that's totally fine. I just want you to have this insight if if and when you get to this place in your anxiety recovery, or maybe you are already there, kind of shifting, viewing your anxiety this way, or it might even help you start the process of like shifting the way you view your anxiety. But if you are, right, if this is helpful, kind of letting go maybe so much of the anger uh, that you have towards this anxiety or why this is happening to you, um, and really like, what did I do to deserve this? Um, and really just being aware of maybe you're still holding up to some hangups about this anxiety and forgiving yourself and forgiving it for showing up, right? Just like acknowledging that this is just part of you being a human and having this human experience and it's hard and it's difficult, but that it's okay. I think the second part in terms of like finding meaning, this really kind of reminds me of a lot of times when I'm working with clients and, you know, whatever is causing their anxious response, uh, again, if we'll stick with that social anxiety or example, it's really about I help them understand, okay, what about this is important to you, right? Because if you didn't value social connections, you wouldn't have social anxiety, right? Your anxiety would show up differently. And so sometimes it's really helpful to tap into like, what is this meaning, right? Like, pain and values are two sides of the same coin. And so if you can tap into what about this pain, what about this anxiety is meaningful? What is it trying to tell you? He has a question here. The simplest way to discover the meaning of your anxiety is to write down the things you feel you're learning from it and write down the reason you want to overcome it. And so like, here's an example. Um, I want to develop, uh, th what's the meaning of these panic attacks? Panic attacks are teaching me more about myself. Uh, it's a crash course in self-development, self-growth. The reason I want to overcome it, I want to become a bigger person. And then the last thing, again, it's this like gratitude, right? So having this, again, this like not just acceptance, okay, fine, I'll, I'll have you when you're here. But like, again, like tend and befriend, like really being there and moving towards like when anxiety shows up, like, ooh, okay, like, can I be really grateful for this experience? Because this is just part of what is showing up in my life and being present with it. And like, is there something it's trying to tell you and being really like leaning into that sense of gratitude towards this discomfort. And again, even like, you know, shifting the way you're viewing it, it's not discomfort, it's just a, a feeling and a reaction that's showing up in this moment. Some caveats that I did want to point out from the book, like I mentioned before, sometimes it can feel a little repetitive. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, also, I know he does this great job of trying to frame like you are not your anxiety, like meaning don't allow this label of anxiety to take on this negative meaning in your life. I think sometimes and I do want to caution that he frames it in a way of like, like anxiety is not a mental illness. And I get where he's coming from. But because he also says anxiety is a mental health disorder. So I think really just, you know, for some people, I don't want that to feel invalidating. Um, because when I do talk about an anxiety disorder with someone, I do give the caveat, like the whole purpose, like this isn't for you to make this meaning about it or about yourself. But I do find for a lot of people, it might feel really relieving or normalizing or validating to have maybe more of a label about what's their what their experience is. So doing my monthly book therapy giveaway. So if that's something you're interested in, look at the description below to see how you can enter. And I really, this is something that's helpful for you. I encourage you to pick up this book. And as always, I encourage you to continue nurturing your mind, body, and soul, whatever that looks like for you. Thanks, guys.